Welcome back. Today we're going to do a tutorial on how to make some text screens that you can change. Let's get started. All right, so today we are looking at a component that I built for another tutorial, but we're going to make this component into today's tutorial and I'm going to be using it for another tutorial that is a theme tutorial. So that's why I built like a bunch of different components for the tutorial because I want it to be kind of cool. So this is just a little part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this, which is have text that changes on the screen and you can go backwards and forwards. So let's go ahead and jump into the editor. All right, so we're back in the editor and I just set up a little test bed to show you what this component does. And I'll try to get this cleaned up and release it. If it's not in the description below, then it's probably not ready for use, but I will try to clean this up at the end of the tutorial so you can use it for your thangs. But first off, we have a little control here, the instrument panel and set to a forward button, a back button, and it is a composite connection to the microcontroller. So let's jump into the microcontroller. All right, so we have the instrument panel coming in and it splits off into two composite connections. We have number one channel going up and number two channel going down. We also have a pulse off to on and a pulse off to on the bottom. And so what that does, when you push the button, it's not set to toggle, it's set to push and it will send in a signal and it will toggle the button for a second and it will change the value. So it'll be like an on off and then on off. And what that does when we go into the Lua script, it updates a Boolean on tick and changes the page. So this is not the prettiest thing you can see here. And actually there is a problem with this is that if you try to build too much text, you can see I'm already at 3,383. This will not work too well. So what I will probably do is see if we can go ahead and move this text out into property text and then bring it in by way of variables. But I'm not sure. Let's see if we can do that. But first off, let me just show you how it works in the current form. So what we have here is a Boolean for channel one, which sets the turn page. And we have a Boolean for channel two, which sets the back page. The default page is set to page one. And so right when this thing loads, it's gonna use page one, which is down here. And that says, you know, the Megalodon update. So what happens when you push that button now if we can get out of here again. So when you push that first button, it comes in here, the channel sends a pulse, the pulse comes through here and it sets the Boolean to one and then it sets back to zero. And then we have the if turn page equals true, which is a Boolean hitting true. And the page is less than 10 pages because we have 10 cases here. It will turn the page to the page plus one. So it adds one to the one and that would be page two, which means it will show this block of text. And so when this block of text is changed, the draw screen function will update, of course, and show the text. So that is how it works. Not too bad, pretty easy to understand. So this else here acts as an error catcher. So if there is a problem with how many numbers we put down here, say we screwed up and we put, I don't know, 12 or five or whatever, and it couldn't find it, we can go ahead and just say error, you know, error, case not found. And that will show up. Eh, it's just an error catcher. Not really needed, but always good to have just in case. So that is it for this. I mean, there's nothing else to it. And let's just go ahead and try it out really quick and we'll show you what it does. So again, if you didn't watch the update video, you can come through here and you can go ahead and just scroll through the different things. So you could make books or manuals or whatever, you know, just to show people your your writing abilities. <laughs> I don't have any. I copy pasted and I even copy pasted incorrectly. If you can see down there, I did it twice. So yeah, whatever. All right, so let's see if we can go ahead and tweak this a bit and make it into something that uses the text box. So what we might want to do that is right now, if I were to lease this component, we would have to jump in here you have to go inside and you would have to go into the Lua and you'd have to change the text, you know, get rid of some of these, add some of these, depending on what you need for your text that you're putting in here. And then there is this giant limit here or this small limit, actually. It's not a giant limit, it's a small limit. And that means you can only have this much and then we start running into problems with, you know, breaking up code into different blocks or whatever. And that's just a mess. So what if, what if right now you and me can figure out how to do 
property text and say page page one and we don't have a value in here right now but we say type your text here and so we can go ahead and come out to the component and when we click here on the component of course we could go ahead and just set our pages so this is my text for page one awesome so we can actually put quite a bit of text in here and then inside our component we'll have code that handles all this so now remember I'm not good at scripting, so I don't know if I can do this. I mean, I got this to work, right? So how hard can it be to get the other thing working? Well, let's go ahead and save this as a new component. We'll call this, well, let's, let's save this one first. Yeah, we'll upload the, that will save the case switch. Let's go ahead and save a new one. And we'll call this case switch dynamic. Yeah, dynamic sounds like a good word. I don't know if this is gonna work. This might be one of those tutorials where nothing works, but we will take a whack at it and uh, see if we learn something along the way. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go into our Lua now, and we are going to say what we need to do. So let me think. This is one of those things where I'm gonna have to fast forward until I figure it out. I go up a screen. All right, let's go ahead and recap where we are. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the component. And you're gonna see we have total number of pages, which is a property text box. We have page one and page two. The maximum is 35, so we have to make 35 of these boxes in order to go ahead and let them fill out. And then we can put like, you know, 35, if we did 35. So now there might be a possibility that if we have 35 boxes and we leave some of them blank, we don't have to put the number of pages. We could just take this off. And then if at some point the pages are empty string, then we don't display them. However, I'm not too good at that. So I'm probably gonna keep it the way it is for right now and maybe update it later if I figure it out. But I wanna get this tutorial done for you and get this component done so you can kind of use it as it is and you can improve upon it. I don't mind. And uh, this is really just for my other tutorial that I'm not done with yet. So. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and jump into the component now and show you what we did so far. So here are the property text. And if you look at them, it says property text, property name. So there's a name and this name is used in the Lua. And we have page one and we have page two. Now if we come over here to the Lua, we're gonna see that we've added uh, this property right here, which is the number of pages, there's a name and we're turning it into a number. And the number is gonna be used to determine what page we are flipping to. So that's the first one. We still have the Boolean for when we click the button forward, or we click the button backwards. And then of course we start at page default of page one. So we could add some error checking, like if the total number of pages is set to zero, then maybe it displays a message. Hey, we don't have page zero, but we're not gonna do that yet. So <laughs> let me just show you what I have. So now we have the code here that turns the page forward and backwards, and that is using the total number of pages to determine where we are. And then we're either adding a page or we're looping back to the first page. And then again, on the back, we either, you know, on page one or we're going farther back and then we're looping back to the total number of pages again. And here is our case switcher. And this is looking at what number we are requesting. So when we request, say, page one, it is grabbing page one and then grabbing the text field and printing that. And that is being printed into the say this, which is, ignore this little guy right here, which is right here. And this is a text box. And you can actually, I guess there are parameters where you could V align and horizontal align, but we're not doing any of that right now. We're just doing the text box is the size of the screen and it automatically wraps the text. So that's what we have right now. And we have up to 35 pages. And right now it only is doing two because we have not set it up for the other property text uh, 35 pages. So we can go ahead and do that. And then we can call this tutorial done and then we can go ahead and add to this later. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and add these property boxes and then if we wanna update this component later, we can go ahead and do that and you know add some error checking and maybe a different way to select how many pages you have. Oh, and you know what else? You know what we should do? Mm. Can we add a color component? You know what, we're not gonna do that this time. Okay, we'll do that next time. So for this now, yeah, for this one, we're not gonna add the color. Actually, we'll add, yes, I'm lying. We will, <laughs> we will add the color option for All right, so let's go ahead and see where we are now. Uh, we've added some white noisy code. White noisy? I never noticed that it had a Y at the end, but it's white noisy. But white noise is always easier to say, I think. But white noise wrote some code for RGB, uh, I'm sorry, hex to RGB conversion. So if we come into the Lua, this is his code right here. And it goes through and it breaks down the hex into RGB code and then what we can do is pass that in with the page. Where is it at? Right here. So we're passing in on page one. We're going to get the color and we're going to go ahead and pass the page number in right here. And then that concatenates and that creates the page number one color hex. And then it goes on for backwards and forwards. We're always updating that. And if we come down to the bottom here, you'll see that it has a set color to R, G, and B and that's from the white noise code. So that works. So if we go ahead and try it out really quick, uh, let's get out of here. All right, so if we look at the component itself, we have the number of pages is set to two. We have sample text for one, and we can like, this is really long sample text, not really, kind of short. And then on the next one, we have the page one color hex. And so we could have different page colors. And so it's gonna be set to a red. And then if we come down here, page two, oops, page two. Oh, the text you can handle and more for your reading pleasure. And then it is set to a golden color and that is it. So if we run this code now, We'll come over here and we'll see there is our red text. If this was a little bit longer, it would automatically wrap. So that's kind of nice. So if we hit the next arrow, we have the nice gold color now. And then of course, if we go forward, it's gonna go back to number one. And if we go back and then back again, it's gonna go back to number one. So we have looping buttons and color text. I think that's pretty cool. I think we might release it like this before I start breaking things. So let's go ahead and finish this up really quick with a little time lapse as we add all the new property boxes up to 35 actually let's do it all right well let's see where we are now i think we're about done with this tutorial and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and release the component i think it's pretty good it's usable at least so as always i'd like to do the disclaimer i am not a proficient uh scripter so do not expect genius <laughs> just expect you know usable so now i'm going to show you where we are with it so if you go ahead and click on it You'll see we now have 35 pages and each one has a color. We set the total number of pages that we're going to use. So if we're gonna use up to 35, use the 35 up here. So for right now, the default is three. It has sample text, sample color. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and run it. But first let's jump into it and see what it looks like. So there we go. So all of these are our text properties and each one uh, is labeled up here at the top. And so are the colors up at the top. And then of course these are gonna be blank, except for the colors are default to gold. So the way this works is the order you create them is the order they appear on the outside on the component. So if you want to do these again, if you wanna add something in the middle like a slider, you have to delete them and then add your slider and then reproduce all these. So just so you know, that is kind of a thing that you have to do in order to put the uh, order of, I guess, fields. So there's not a way to like click on it and say, this is number one, number two, number three, or anything like that. So kind of a bummer, but maybe they'll add that later on if people start using these quite a bit. So if we go into the code, we still have white noises hex code, which is the hex to RGB function. And that just converts our hex into an RGB number, which is used all the way at the bottom down here to color it. And then I did not change anything else that we did previously. So all this is working. The only thing I did was add all these text fields. All right, so let's go ahead and try it and see if it works like it should. I'm gonna leave the defaults 
So now we have our first line, samples text. Oh, did I do that backwards? I must have did that backwards. Hold on one second, let's jump back in there. Unless it ignores a new line, does it ignore the new line? Uh, let's see. It might ignore sample text one, the new line. Is this a new line? Okay, let's see real quick. All right, so it ignores it here. Hmm. I'm sure there's a way to process new lines if we wanted to, but we're not going to do that for right now. So let's just go ahead and clean this up really quick again, because I don't want to release the samples with something that doesn't work. And so we'll just come in here and say, this is my sample. Oops. Sample one text and the line wraps if it is too long for the monitor that it is on the text oops the text should be red i'm talking like a robot okay sample two text is a very pretty gold and then sample three text is Sample three text is very blue. Oops. Oops, sample. Right. Sample three text is very blue, like the ocean with the megalodon. Megalodon. I don't know how to spell megalodon, but we're going to go with that. All right. Let's test it really quick and see what happens. And there you see it's wrapping. Okay, now we'll go to the next page. Boop. And there's our gold. Sample text two is very pretty gold. And then we'll go to our next one, which is the light blue. Our sample text three is very blue, spelled correctly, like the ocean with the megalodon. And I don't know if that's spelled wrong. All right, but we're gonna go with that. <laughs> All right. All right, well, that's it for today. I'm gonna go ahead and release this component down below in the description if you wanna try it out. And if you want to make improvements or suggest improvements, you can. Not that I can do it, but, you know, this gives you a starting point, and hopefully it'll help if you don't know how to script like me. That's it for today. I will see you next time. Goodbye! <laughs> Megalodon! Megalodon! Oh, no. Sorry, that's a train.